Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at the carrot package and essentially what I'm going to do is just actually look at some, just a hand, well actually just even two different types of regression and, uh, uh, techniques and try them out on a well-known data set from Kaggle called uh, Boston Housing. Okay, so first off what I'm going to do is load up carrot, obviously, because it's about carrot. And I'm also going to load up a data set, uh, a, a package called ML Bench. The reason is because it gives us this data set here, Boston Housing. Okay, so so let's have, just uh, call up Boston Housing. Okay, and there we have it called. And so essentially, what I'm going to do here is scroll down a little bit. Okay, head of Boston Housing. Okay. So essentially, these are a load of uh, demographic and uh, economic variables related, related to housing, crime and uh, distance to uh, major centers of industry or something like that. DIS is distance, okay? Now, the last one is the, the uh, interesting one. This is the target variable or the response variable. This is the medium value of the house in term in thousands. Okay, so essentially this is what we want to try and predict. How much? It, let's try and come up with a predictive model for the house. Okay, for the property. Okay, so what I'm going to do actually first off is essentially what I have here is numeric variables, and what I'm going to do there is just run a very simple linear model. Okay, so train. Uh, here's our little formula here. That's a regression formula. MEDV, which is our uh, target or our response variable, explained by everything else. That's the tilde dot. Dot means all of the other variables in the data set. Now, we don't really have to do much pre-processing. Essentially, this works in the same way as a, um, a, a, a linear model as without using caret, okay? We name our data set data equals Boston housing and just state that we're using LM linear model okay so let's just run that and that's a very simple sort of way of like it's almost overkill to use carrot to run this uh, linear model but you know you can do it so uh, the essentially what we're going to do here is just actually have a quick look at the summary so we fitted the model and this is the summary output a little bit messy but anyway tidy this is what we're interested in here the adjust the r squared okay or the adjusted r squared these are the r squared values okay and essentially says that not 0.7338 and not 0.7406 uh, uh, decent enough actually you know it's not a bad l model but uh, can we do a little bit better with a different model that's actually what the question is about Okay, what we're really going for here. So essentially, actually, what I want to do here is this comes up with the this piece of code here is comes up with the predictions that would uh, this model would create for the observed data, and this is the observed data. So essentially, what we have here is what is predicted by the model and what is observed in fact. Okay post resample. Essentially what we're going to do here is actually run this again. Okay. RMSE is 4.679 and the R squared, which we have just above there, not point, uh, uh, 7406 and so on. Okay. So essentially what we want to do here is try and sort of see, is there a different model approach that might be better? Okay. So essentially, you're reading the carrot um, documentation, and you find out this thing called partial least squares. Okay, so it's very straightforward enough. Uh, so essentially, what you have to do is just call an extra package, PLS. Okay, uh, the for the most part, it actually works the same way. Okay, train uh, the model formula, the, the name of the data set, and so on. But essentially, rather than LM, we have kernel PLS, okay? And that is called from, call, that is uh, available to us by, because, we, because we've called the library PLS, 
Okay, so let's just run that. Okay, I just run it again to get rid of the. the now there we go. And well, we it, the the model has been fitted. Okay, and essentially we just want to know was this worth our while? Okay, and so what we're going to do here is uh, get the oh my god that's terrible r squared is not point three two. Okay, so and the RMSC which is actually a higher. So essentially you want you look the lower RMSCs and higher uh, higher r squareds. Okay, now don't let's just be clear. Uh, you need to know a little bit. You need to go into much more detail when you're critiquing your model than just naively comparing r squareds for one r squared versus the other r squared. Be a far more thorough about it. Learn everything you can about residuals and diagnostics and model appraisal because it, it just simply comparing one r squared to the other is very simplistic. In this case, you know, it does actually sort of give us a pretty good picture, though, that the partially squared approach here is just not really worth looking at, really. As I have set up. Okay, so what I could do, I doubt I'm going to get a, um, a model that's bad that would, uh, I, I doubt I'm going to be able to boost that up to uh, improve this uh, specification of this PLS model such that I would be better off by... Um, that I would be better off with uh, using PLS in the long run. So essentially, this is actually just sort of really telling me that PLS is a bit of a dead end. Okay. Now, uh, essentially, what I should do here is go and find out what PLS is actually correctly used for. But anyway, just it's not used for. Um, it's not going to be a good. It's not a good fit for this problem here. Okay.